This is Seth David for SchoolofBookkeeping.com, bringing to you another special screencast. This time we're talking about QuickBooks Online for real estate brokers. Real estate brokers have some challenges in terms of how to keep track of everything that they need to keep track of. I sell a property for a million dollars. A million dollars is not the amount of income I've earned. I make a commission. Let's say it's 5% of that. My income on that sale is $50,000. I want to be able to keep track of how much I sold the property for, but I don't want a million dollars hitting any income line on my P&L because I don't want to pay taxes on that money, especially since, depending on your entity type and where you live, in some cases, for example, an LLC might get hit with gross receipts taxes. In other words, you don't get to deduct anything. So if I show a million dollars in income, I'm going to be overtaxed on that. So it's really important to think through how we're going to present this information in a way that gives us the information we need without causing us to overpay something like taxes. We also need to be able to track, uh, we're going to very likely uh, encounter the situation where we advance costs to our agents. The agents are going out making the sales on our behalf. We need to keep them happy. We need to pay for insurances, for example, on their behalf. And when the time comes to pay them their commissions on the sales they've made, we are going to want a system that enables us to quickly and easily see what we've advanced them so that we can deduct that from their commission check. So how do we do this in QuickBooks? We're going to show you two things, how to book the sale and how to book the uh, amount payable to the agent for their share of the commission. We're putting two assumptions in place here. As the brokerage, our commission on the sale is 5%. As the commission uh, rate that we pay to the agent, we're going to assume 80% of that. So let's see what this looks like. When I'm ready to book the sale, of course, I'm going to come here into my customers list, and you'll see how I've got this set up. I have a customer grouping called agents. Within that, I have agent X. Of course, if I had other agents in here, there'd be agent Y and Z and so on. And then within each agent, I've got a sub-customer, or job as we call it in the desktop edition, called uh, based on the property listing. In this case, as an example, I'm calling it 123 Geek Street. So when I am ready to post the invoice, what I can do is come right over here to 123 Geek Street and I can create the invoice. Now what I've done is I've created an item called sale of a property. So I start typing that and it comes up. Now I want you to pay attention over on the right here to the quantity and rate. Watch what I did. When I choose this, notice the quantity comes up as one, but notice the rate came to 0.05. And this is the whole trick to my system. And that's not what I meant to do. <clears throat> The quantity is going to be the selling price of the home I've sold. So if I sold it for a million dollars, that's my quantity. The rate came up as 5% because I set it up that way when I set up the item. So when I sell a home for a million dollars, I basically, what I sold was a million dollars worth of property. And so that's kind of the logic behind using the quantity, but also it lets me track the sale amount without it hitting my income lines. So I don't have to show a million dollars and then deduct 950000 I have a million in the quantity, the rate is 5%, and my commission comes out perfectly to $50,000. So let's save and close. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to likely get the money via wire, and there may be a wire fee that gets taken out. So this is a bonus tip. How do I deal with that? Let's receive the payment for the full amount of the sale, of course, and we're going to want to make sure this payment goes into undeposited funds. I could go back to the invoice and add a line item to deduct the fees there. I don't like doing that. I've described this in other videos dealing with uh, handling credit card processing fees. It's the same concept. It's a fee that the bank takes out before I get my funds. So accounting wise, it'll be correct. If I go into the invoice and I show a discount of let's say $75 for a wire fee, I can do that. The problem I have with that is that my invoice total is something less than the true sale amount that I want to kind of show. So it's not a question of being right or wrong. It's more a question of the form, the presentation. How does it look? I think this looks much better. And, and that's important to me because I like to know that the way the information in my accounting system is presented is presented in a manner that makes it very cut and dry and crystal clear what's going on because I may or may not have stakeholders at some point who want to come in and take a look at things and the more they see that I've got things laid out nice and clean the better chances I'm going to get of either selling my business or getting the financing I'm looking for whatever the reasons might be that I want somebody looking in my books so I prefer to do the extra step and separately record the uh, payment of fifty thousand dollars and then I'm showing you in a second how to deal with the wire fee that might be taken out. So we're going to put this in undeposited funds. I save and close. 
and then I'm going to come over here and we're going to make a bank deposit and over here I'm going to put in the wire fee so we'll book it to bank service charges and the amount is going to be minus 75 of course, I need to check this off to let QuickBooks know I'm receiving this payment that I got based on that sale, and I'm deducting the $75. So my net deposit down here at the bottom right is my $49,925. Save and close. And of course, you know, up here we're choosing the bank account. I only have the one, Nerd Bank. Save and close. And now let's go look at a balance sheet. We go to reports. We go to balance sheet. And then let's run this for all dates. I love this. I can use my keyboard shortcuts. I hit the drop down, type an A, and it goes right up to all dates. Run report. And sure enough, there's I had started my company off with a million dollars. Wrote a couple of checks, aging cost advances, which is part two right here of this video that we're going to do. And, uh, and I'm going to show you how to deal with paying the agent. So I've got my million dollars in the bank. I advanced cost to the agent of $5,500. So let's click on that. And let's customize this because I might have several agents working for me. So I want to make sure I'm able to group this by customer because that will show me, I didn't want to change columns, by grouping it by customer and running that report, it'll total it by agent essentially because of the way that I've set it up. So I'll see agent X, I'll see agent Y, each with their own group, each with their own subtotal. So now I'm ready to pay my agent's commissions, the 80% that the agent gets on the 50000 and I have this report up so that I can refer to it so I know exactly what to deduct from their commission check. So what's that going to look like? Notice I've now got two tabs open. Let's duplicate this tab because I want to keep my balance sheet up there. So now I'm opening up a third tab. We're going to go to vendors. I have Agent X also set up as a vendor. So let's create a bill. And then in the bill I'm going to use items. Watch what happens when I pick sale of a property. Notice it comes up with the rate, 80%. Again, I'm going to use my quantity, but my quantity is not a million dollars because now his pay is based on the commission that we earn. So that's 50,000. The customer is going to be 123 Geek Street, right? Because that's the property that got sold. So the agent gets 40,000. I end up netting out 10 as the broker. Now, how do we recoup the other expenses? Basically, I want to come back over here, and I have $5,500 in cost to recoup. Part of it was insurance. Part of it was a, a check I wrote the agent. I just advanced them money against their commissions. So let's go back to the bill, and let's do the easy part first, minus $5,500. The account is going to be uh, agent cost advances. And if I want, I can split it up even. $5,000, probably not a bad idea. Agent cost advances, $500. And then, of course, both in both cases, the customers need to be uh, Agent X. Right? We wouldn't have this associated with the property because it's not. It's just associated with the agent. And if you go back to the report, you'll see these costs. Notice they're, when they total by customer, you don't see the property here because they were associated just at the agent level, not at the property level. So coming back over here to the bill, I've got a $40,000 commission, but I'm deducting my $5,500. So their net amount that they're going to receive is $34,500. So that's it. And you'll see in a minute, I'm going to save and close this transaction. So I've got my bill in place based on what I owe to the vendor. There's the open bill for $34,500. let us refresh this page in my browser so that it will now include that recoupment. Right, so here it is. I got the $5,000 minus $5,000. It all zeroes out beautifully. If I come over here and refresh my balance sheet, I will now have a payable, and I will have no more agent costs advanced. See that? Nice and zero. Nice and zero. And then down here, there's my accounts payable, my $34,500. From this point, it's just a matter of going in and recording the payment on the bill and sending the agent a check for their 
net commissions um, and you'll probably want to print out the detail on that so that my friends is 10 minutes of free information on using QuickBooks online for a real estate brokerage and really what I've just done is given away the farm and given you some of the most critical parts of it of course yes we are going to roll out a full-fledged course on this to give you much more detailed information about how this gets done and uh, and how the whole process can be dealt with but uh, with this this, my friends, is just one example of the kind of information that I'm going to be offering you at schoolofbookkeeping.com on a continuing basis. As of the time I'm recording this, and certainly by the time you're watching this, you'll be able to access, if not the entire course yet, a good chunk of the beginnings and the continued rollout of our course on cloud accounting with QuickBooks Online. In this course, we're giving you the basics of how to use QuickBooks Online, but you can bet that there's going to be industry-specific courses rolled out in the future covering things just like this. As always, I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day, and I look forward to seeing you on the web.